The untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is the official post fight review for Gamalia Fai versus Luca Regoli, and Gamalia Fai grinds out a decision victory over Lucas Regoli to become the W, the the European champion at 122 pounds. Um, you know, so he's, he's European super bantamweight champion. I believe the only other fighters from the country of the UK to win that title at that weight class are like, um, they, they were saying Carl Frampton and um, like, four, was it Carl Frampton and four other fighters? Like, I, can't, I can't remember like the three or four other fighters. It was Carl Frampton and like three other, three other guys. So he joins some esteemed company, you know, as one of only a handful of fighters from his country, which has a rich and proud history of boxing to capture the European title at that weight class. And, um, you know, it was a good fight. You know, Luca Regoldi was a guy that, um, you know, he'd been European champion for quite some, for, 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 for a little bit of time, you know, and, and Regoldi, uh, had, I believe he defended the European belt two times. So not, not, not a bad fighter. He, he, has, he had proven himself at that European level. And if Gamal had any ambitions to get to the world level, and I know that he wants to go to world level because I talked to him back last December around this time, and I interviewed him about, um, what his future ambitions are, and he said he wants to be world level. He he, want, he wants to fight all these guys, or in, or, or in his words, he says, "I want to fight all these geezers. He wants to fight all the geezers." All right, I, I can't do a I can't do a Brahmi Birmingham accent. It's, it's not it's not it's not it's not in my wheelhouse. But he wanted to fight all these geezers. That th th those were his words. Um, you know, Gamal Yafai is a good example of. Um, of a loss not meaning everything in boxing because he had that fight against Gavin McDonald early in his career, he lost, and now he's European champion. And he fought a guy on Regoli tonight who came who came for. I mean, Regoli was eating some very, very, very hard flush shots from Gamal. Gamal was picking his shots and he was putting weight behind these shots. You know, I, I talked to Gamal, he follows me on Instagram, we talk sometimes. And Gamal has told me many times that his favorite fighter is Roberto Duran. He watches his fights all the time. I mean, he told me himself he was watching a lot of Roberto Duran during the lockdown. And you can kind of tell he likes for Duran because he throws his punches with bad intentions, bad intentions, heavy shots, lots of weight behind him. He, he he throws what we call here on True School Sports grown man punches, punches to come and cut the lights out, you know. So that's what he was doing. Lots of Regoldi in this fight, um, stabbing him downstairs, throwing the straight right down to the body, throwing hooks to the body, throwing hooks up top, uh, countering him. And you got to give credit to Regoldi. You got to tip your cap to Regoldi because this guy took a very, very good shot. He kept coming forward. He kept fighting and he was very durable. And, and he had, listen, don't get it twisted. He asked him, he asked around the seventh, eighth round. I was, I was trying to figure out who I thought, I wasn't scoring the fight, but I thought it was pretty close around that eighth, around that eighth round. It wasn't until those championship rounds that Gamal kind of separated himself, which is a good sign, by the way. It's a good sign if, if you're Gamal, you're fight. You, you, you've shown, you, you've shown a lot to not just the boxing, but boxing world, but more importantly yourself by, Boxing the way you did in those championship rounds because in the middle of this in the middle of the fight, Gamal Gamal uh, I believe he was doing some good work. He was landing good counter shots, but he was leaving. He was he didn't really impose himself on the fight as much as you would like to see. And Regoli was taking advantage of that by by landing some good shots of his own. It's just that the, his shots weren't heavy enough to back up Gamal or uh, hurt Gamal or anything like that. But he was landing his shots. Don't get it twisted. So if you're Gamal, you're fire, right? You you know. From rounds 9 to 12, I thought, I mean, I didn't score him, but Gamal Yafai separated himself in those rounds. And if you're a fighter, you always want to be better in the back half of a 12-round fight. And if you're a fighter like Gamal Yafai, you lost to Gavin McDonald early in your, your career. I'm sure you had to ask some serious questions of yourself and there were doubts and things that were going through your mind. So for you to, for you to go on the road to Italy in Luca Regoldi's backyard and... Dig deep in them in, in, in them championship rounds to, to, to capture the European title. You know, um, that's a good that, that, that's a good sign for Gamal. And I think like this fight, there's going to be some things that he can take from this fight, positives and obviously the negatives as well, and become a better fighter. Because uh, he, as the fight wore on, he began to use his legs more. And because he used his legs more, um, he was able to kind of be a bit more of a ring general um, in the latter parts of the fight and separated himself and was able to set up counters. So I want Gamal to go back, go back and watch those last two, three or four rounds. And that's the blueprint to the fighter. I think, uh, he's got a chance to become, and you know, now that he's European champion with the, what that essentially means at 122 is that Gamal Yafai is officially a fringe contender. He's a fringe contender, which basically means that he's going to be, if he's not already, I don't, I don't think he's ranked top 15 of any of the, uh, ranking organizations. Let's, let's, let's take a quick look. 
um on uh on the rankings you know it's your boy bt true school sports give me one second as we scroll here on boxing scene to see the look at the rankings so we go to 122 all right uh so luca regoli so prior to this fight happening luca regoli was ranked number 12 by the wbc um he wasn't ranked by the wba he was ranked 13th by the ibf and yeah so regoli was ranked in two sanctioning organizations before this fight, now that now that um Gamalia fight is beating Rigoli, I would be led to believe that he's gonna be seeing his name in that top fifteen very soon. So now he's a he's a fringe contender, he's a fringe contender, and you know there's some good fights out there for him. If we look at like the IBF, the IBF champion is Akhmadaliev, WBC champion is is Luis Neti. Now Akhmadaliev, I feel like would be a a, a not, not a bad style for him because Akhmadaliev is going to be there to be hit. And I feel like Gamalia fights at his best when people want to trade with him because um, he is a heavy puncher. He's heavy handed. The only criticism I would have of Gamal, and I'm speaking as somebody who's been punched by him, so I'm not speaking out of turn. If Gam Gamal has got to learn how to vary the speed of, the speed of his punches better, and when he lands a big shot, to not sit there and pose. He did he did a couple times for Goldie. He landed a really hard counter right hook. I think it was like in the eighth or ninth round. Might have been the seventh. And... He, the goalie kind of like, he didn't buckle, but like you can kind of tell he froze and the shot really got his attention. And I, I would have liked to see Gamal continue to throw more, but um, he could play. One thing Gamal, two things Gamal doesn't lack, okay? Two things Gamal Yafai does not lack, and we've seen that in his career thus far. He don't lack heart, and he doesn't lack durability, okay? He's got heart, and he's got durability. And honestly, those are two things you can't teach in boxing. Because, um, some it, you know, you can run as many, many miles as you want. Um, you could condition yourself as much as you want, but sometimes some fighters just aren't as durable as others, you know. And so he's got some good ingredients to to, to be a factor at one twenty two, you know. Um, and I think he'd make for some entertaining fights. I know from the American perspective, sometimes uh, these British fighters we don't we write them we write them off, but I wouldn't write off Gamal Yafai. Gamal Yafai is going to be somebody that to be reckoned with. Um, you know, let's just say right. He's a, he's the IB he he's gonna be in the IBF rankings and he's gonna be in the WBC rankings very very soon. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing a Gamalia fight versus a Steve. I mean I know Stephen Fulton is supposed to fight Angelo Leo, but that fight's been scrapped twice because of COVID. So if that fight can't happen a third time, I wouldn't mind seeing Gamalia fight get a crack at Fulton because Fulton it's it, it's the classic boxer puncher matchup. And I I'll, I'll be honest with you I'll be honest with you okay. Fulton is faster foot wise than Gamalia fight. But I feel like if Gamal Yafai were to hit Fulton with the same exact shots he hit Luka Rigoli with tonight, I think Fulton would fold. I actually think Fulton would fold. Or at least get hurt. And it'd be a tough fight for him, you know? But he going as a favorite. That'd be a good fight, though. I wouldn't mind that fight. You know, Angelo Leo. Listen, I think Angelo Leo, for me, for, for my money, Angelo Leo was the best fighter at 122. And he's going to prove that as uh, time goes on because he's got he's got what Gamal Yafai has, which is the, the durability. He's got the, 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 the heart. And he's got a lot of skills that people just haven't been able to see yet. And, um, you know, I think he's, he's, he's going to be a very difficult fighter to beat because this, this kid trains like a straight dog. Um, but, yeah, even Gamalia Fiber versus Angelo would be a good fight. There's, there's, you know, Carlos Castro, Isaac Dogbay. There's there's some good matchups out there for, for Gamalia Fiber. Hopefully, Eddie Hearn, Frank Smith, Matchroom Boxing, and all parties involved on that side of the palm do right by this guy's career because if there's anybody that deserves success, if there's anybody that I know from the UK that deserves some success in boxing, it's, it's this guy because he's just very down to earth. He's honest with himself, which is, I think, is very, which is very, you need that as a fighter. You need to be honest with yourself. Be confident, work hard, aim high, but be honest with, what, with where you're at. And when I talked to him last year, I got the impression of a guy who was honest with himself that was working hard to um, overcome an early setback in his career. So, um, you know, good, good, a good step in the right direction for Gamal Yafai tonight. You know, he's done Birmingham proud. He's done Cal Yafai, who was in the corner proud. He's done Max McCracken proud. Shout out to Max McCracken, you know, um, another good trainer, the, the brother of Rob McCracken. He was in the corner tonight for Gamal, and he's guided him to a European title. And hopefully he'll guide him into some more big wins in the future. And I wish that, I wish Gamal Yafai nothing but success. Um, shout out to him, you know, just a really, really gutsy performance, really, really good performance. And, and, and a good solid scrap with, with, with Luca Rigoli in Italy. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you watch the fight. Uh, you know, take the time, time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.